Hi guys, Kyung here, and today I thought we would do something a little different. Um, I decided I want to make little coin envelopes for the train journal, and I decide I have a bunch of these like little paper bags. They're for like lunch bags. You can get them at the Dollar Tree. You get like a hundred of them for a dollar or something like that. I don't know, a lot of them for a dollar. And so I have a whole pack of these and I thought, you know, I love the paper and I thought that um, they would be perfect for coin envelopes. So I thought we would use that and I thought we would do them with the envelope punch board. And um, I found uh, where to like do this um, on Pinterest. But I think, um, oh, what's her name? Uh, something Mermaid, I, <laughs> I didn't write it down, I should have. Did I have my notebook with me? No. <laughs> the notebook I carry around to write things down so I remember things <laughs> that I don't ever remember to carry around. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, so we're just gonna cut this, I'm thinking. I want it six inches. Uh, I want them six by six. Anyway, I'll have the link to her, um, to the Pinterest uh, tutorial that I found this at down below in the description. So we just want a six by six piece. Does that give us two? It does. Let's cut this one at this line and then we'll have two six by six pieces. Okay. So we are done with this for right now. So we have cut We've cut our paper bag into six by six pieces, and now we're going to use the envelope punch board. So if I remember, it's what, two and five eighths, I think, um, is where you wanna punch your first little hole. It is at two and five eighths. Oh, this punch board doesn't like to cut this paper very well, does it? Um, I've not tested this on this paper yet. I've only tested it on like a card stock. Let's uh, let's really put it down, push it down and see if that 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 helped. Sometimes you just gotta you know get a little rough with it. <laughs> Show it who's boss. Still didn't want it. It's fine. We'll trim it up if we have to. But yeah, I thought little coin envelopes would be so cool. And then I thought, well, what will I put in the coin envelopes? Will I make, you know, a journal card or something? And then I thought, you know, I may think, and I'm going to have a think about it, but I'm going to think about maybe trying to find a way to make little tokens, like little train tokens. Wouldn't that be cool? We could put in our coin envelope. So I'm going to cut this little flap off, right? So we're just going to cut it off where it meets and then the bottom flap, we also want to cut off flat, but we don't want to cut it off flat so that, because we want to cover the V, so we'll do it here. That's fine. And then also here, we want to also cut this one flat as well. We'll do it there. Okay, so now we're gonna cut them, these little, um, these little triangles off. Try and make sure we're straight as possible. That's our scoring tool. So there we go, that's cut off. So my and my sister were talking again <laughs> about trains. <laughs> and she was telling me that the first train she ever took was at Lakeside. So we have this amusement park, this historic amusement park in Colorado that was built in 1908, I want to say, around 1908. Um, and a lot of the original buildings still exist. And they had built a train track around the entire park, um, around the lake, because the park surrounds a lake. Um, and at night, it's really cool because you can see if you take the train at night, um, around the park and it's just a miniature train it's a little train um, but they're old they're like vintage historic trains I think it might be one of the only they might have one of the only miniature steam trains still running um, but it's always you know they're always having to do maintenance on it and, um, but it's really cool because if you take a ride on the uh, train at night around the park the lights from the park reflect on the uh, 
Why is that all so crooked? That's really badly crooked, isn't it? The lights of the um, a, a park, because there's so many lights, the lights, uh, the park lights up, and it reflect reflects on the um, lake. And as you're going around the um, the lake on the train, you can see the park lit up and the reflection on the lake of the park lit. It's really cool. It's really really cool. Um, well, I already messed this up. I was going to put a brad closure in it, right, in these two pieces so that we could wrap around. Um, <laughs> and I'm thinking that with this, it won't, we won't be able to fix it. But that's okay. We'll have one that doesn't close like that, right? It's all very crooked, I feel like. But what can you do? So there's our first little coin envelope, um, a very crooked little coin envelope. <laughs> Let's do the next one. And maybe this time we won't mess it up, huh? Um, we'll still use that one, but that's what happens when one is uh, faffing about, as Cam uh, Julia Camellia Crafts would say. <laughs> uh, but yeah, great. We um, we used to go every single year to Lakeside, and they're still running. There's still an, um, a running park. They're the oldest park in Colorado, uh, amusement park. A lot of the original buildings from 1908 still stand in the park. And the, oh, the carousel is really old. They've got really, really cool old rides. They get a little bit of a bad reputation because they're old. You know, people are like, it's dangerous, but actually they're really good. They're really, really good about maintenance and um, everything. So I rec if anyone ever comes to Colorado at any point, I recommend to definitely check out Lakeside, even just to walk around and look. It's really, really cool. They have a maze, like a, a mirror maze, like a window. It's more a window maze. Um, there's not mirrors. It's like see-through glass, but it's old. You know, it's an old one. It's really cool. They have a really old um, wooden roller coaster. Yeah, very cool. Um, I guess originally, what they call it, the, the, in the center of the park that overlooks the entire park is a giant tower. And what do they call it? The Tower of Lights or something like that. And I think it's got 19,000 bulbs or something like that. Crazy. Um, but that still works and they still light it up every night. And yeah, it's a very cool place. I love that place. And the train, the train is definitely a must um, to go on that. It's really cool, especially at night. Um, we haven't been in a few years, you know, what with <laughs> everything going on. Um, but I hope maybe next year we'll be able to. It's run in the same family. So the same family has been running it, like, you know, for generations. It's really cool. So the lady who runs it, um, she's getting older. And so she kind of um, has given it to her daughter. And, and her daughter is really cool. She's a really cool lady. So yeah, you can even go and like talk to the owners. It's it's a really cool family friendly park. Pretty cheap, way cheap compared to you know amusement parks these days. Amusement parks are pricey. It costs, geez, I don't know, sixty dollars a person to get into Elitch Gardens or something ridiculous. Something I would never pay. <laughs> so I need to make little Brad closures, and I hope that I remember how to do it. I'm um, bear with me. You'd think uh, if I was smart, I would have <laughs> practiced beforehand, huh? Of course not. Yeah, I'm going to think of a way to make little tokens that we can put in our coin envelopes because I think that that would be really cool. Um, so we have three and three, and then I think we need smaller ones, don't we? I don't know. I can't remember. I can't remember. Open. Open. Come on. It's like slide, but it doesn't want to slide. We'll just uh, pull some of these out. It's a glittery one. Okay, so we have small ones and bigger ones, right? So we want to glue the big ones together. We want to glue the big ones together. <laughs> like this. 
right? I think that's right. And then we want to glue small ones together as well. Okay, put one more. Stick, stick together. No, you don't want to stick? Probably because of that glitter paper. <laughs> okay, there we go. We're stuck. Now let's grab our book and our, this is another thing I learned from Julie at Camille Crafts, how to do this, but it's been a while since I have done it. So we want to poke a hole in the big one. That's not very even, is it? Oh well, not very centered. Okay, we'll poke a hole in the little one. And then we'll uh, grab our brads, right? So where, oh, they're right in front of me. If it were a snake, <laughs> I'd be bitten. Bitten, I say. Okay, here's a little brad. Should we do little brads? I'm thinking, yes. Where did the other little one go? I just had it. I wish I hadn't spilled my, <laughs> and I have yet to, I don't, I don't know if I ever will go in and try to, try to organize them. I'll probably just leave them the way they are, all messed up. Okay, so the little one I think goes on last. So we'll put the big one on first. Right, so there's the big one and then the little one. Come on. Go on there. There we go. And then we will poke a hole. <clears throat> and put this go in there. <laughs> I'm always fighting with these brads. Okay. Now we glue this part down. This part gets glued down. Like that. Oh, I suppose we should have glued the middle part down too. That would help. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so our middle part's glued down and our bottom little piece is glued down. And so now we need to do the top one. So we'll do the same thing. Glue these pieces to Together. So yeah, I think that was her first train ride the, at Lakeside. And I have early memories of riding that train as a, a very young kid too. Because um, we've been, we used to go there since we were really, really young. I think it was my very first roller coaster I ever ridden, rode, ever ridden, ever rode was at Lakeside. Um, they used to let you ride, you know, back in the day. Um, you could ride that, uh, the big white roller coaster if you were, you know, you didn't have, I don't think there was even a height restriction. Um, so I was really young. I was maybe three <laughs> when I rode that roller coaster for the first time. And my dad just held me tight, you know, and uh, they have an old school Ferris wheel with the rocking seats. I won't get on it because I'm terrified of Ferris wheels. <laughs> I am good on that. This is all kinds of crooked, but what can you do? I could ink them, but, um, but I may wait till I put them on before I do. Okay, so we grabbed a second bread and I'm sure we lost it. Um, where did it go? Where did it go? What was that? Was it a cartoon or something? Right. Oh, there it is. Where he'd be like, where did it go, George? Where did it go? <laughs> was that like a cartoon? Oh, I don't know. I think it was. Wasn't it a dog? Wasn't it? Oh, sorry, I'm all out of screen. I swear it was like a dog or something, right? 
He'd be like, where did it go, George? Where he was like looking for a cat or something. <laughs> He'd be looking all around, you know. I don't know. Come on, go. Well, and then we don't even want the small one anyway right now. We want the big one first. I know I always fight because I don't ever poke my holes big enough, you know. I poke them too small. Look, and our pieces are coming apart. It's fine. We'll just... <laughs> Sorry, guys. Come on. Go in. Okay. We're going to try this again. We're going to glue this back to this. Now stick... We're going to punch this hole again. There. Now you'll go in there. Look at that. Ta-da! Okay. It doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to work. <laughs> that's, how I, that's how I look at it. Just needs to work. Okay. This one goes in here like this. Yeah, I'm kind of new at the whole Brad closure thing. This may be only maybe the second one I've ever done. That's not too bad, right? That doesn't look bad, especially for not lining. I didn't even I didn't even line it up, did I? Um, let's ink it a little bit. We'll go in with some black. We'll soot soot it up it all up. We'll just, you know, ink it really quick, blacken it. You know, it was left out by the train mm -hmm. where all the coal and smoke and dirty, nasty exhaust and stuff. Okay, and then I brought out this string, which I thought would be nice. Okay, I'm going to tie it. And I'm going to tie it in a knot because I don't just don't ever trust it. I just don't. Okay. And then where are my scissors? Wow, this is the first time we've even used scissors today. Okay. So we have that. We'll just bring this. I think I've seen Fiona over uh, Miss Miss Paint a lot. Um, I think she, I've watched her do this many times as well. Yes, actually, recently. <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it, so you can see her. She does better instructions than I do on this. I'm just playing around. Okay, so we have our little coin envelope. Look at it. It's so cute, and I love that we use the paper bag for it. It's like a great um, texture. And it's just like, it's a, it's a legit little coin envelope. I love it. Um, we have this little orange string that closes it off. I did it too tight. It doesn't need to be too tight, just to, like that. Let's c decorate it. Um, I'm thinking we'll just use one of these, yeah? Something out of this book? Some of these are really small, like they really, um, so we'll look at that. This one might look good. Yeah, let's do that. There's nothing really too great in terms of the other side. So, I mean, I kind of like the little girl and the guy checking the ticket, but it's really distorted. So, we'll do this one instead. And I'm going to do it like this. As I do, because uh, this is the part of the train that I want. I want this part. Yeah, and then I'll just cut it shorter when it's smaller. So, probably like that. Right, so we're cutting off maybe an eighth, maybe an eighth, maybe. That seems right. Right, that one was a little less. Yeah, about an eighth off the from the mark. Uh-oh. Where did I put my mark? Oh, there it is. 
my sister was telling me, why don't you use like a white pen or something on things like that? Because black blends in. I'm like, yeah, but then you can't erase it. Or, you know, if you cut it wrong, you're left with a white mark forever. And I still somehow cut it. I don't know how I marked it wrong. Or maybe I just didn't cut enough off. It's okay. We'll cut some extra off. It'll be fine. Add a little bit of color into the journal. That will be good anyway. It's going to be very um, black and white and brown, I think. So I'm going to try. I did find a couple of really cool digital kits that um, I'm going to use. So one is from Victoria Designs. It's like um, one of her travel. There's not really a lot of trains in it, but it's a travel kind of um, kit. So it'll work. It'll match. And then I have um, one I found from Far Mirage. Um, and so there, um, that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use those two. Where is my ink? My vintage photo. We'll just ink around. Ink around our train. Just a little bit of subtle ink. Vintage it up just a little bit. I don't want to take away from the color, you know, so I don't want to soot it up too much. You know, I don't want to like use black, for example. Um, black might look good, actually, but um, this is what we decided. <laughs> I suppose we could do the very edges black. It might make it stand out a little bit more against the brown. A little bit of contrast. Just the very edges. Just a smidge. A smidge. Yeah. The felt is falling off of the back of this piece. Oh, I'll have to show Michelle Fenske sent me some goodies. She sent me like little finger daubers. <gasps> so cool. I'll show them off on my next friendship journal. I'm all excited to try them out. I've a uh, long time ago during one of the lives during one of the weekend lives over at Miss Paint a lot and Miss Paint a lot does. Um, I had mentioned, you know, all oh, they're so cute those little finger daubers. And um, I had been wanting to get some and try them but then I forgot as I do. And uh, she remembered and sent me a few. So I'm super excited to try those out and see how they are, the little finger ones. They're so cute. OK, so here's a little coin envelope. Let's put like a stamp or something on it. Uh, let's grab our stamps, our little train stamps. They're probably, I don't know, still good. They're probably good stamps. <laughs> I don't care. I should go to the post office, take them in and ask them, can I use these? Like, are these good to, to use or are they just like commemorative? It looks like they're good. They look like good stamps. They probably like, yes, they're good. Use them, please. <laughs> I know the uh, post office is always encouraging people to use like old stamps and stuff that they have. OK, so we have a stamp. We have a train. Um, I feel like the stamp is really white. Vintage it up a little bit. Put a little bit of black. A little bit of black here and there. Look at that. Ta-da! Now it blends in and looks good. Looks like it's part of the deal. So that's what it is. Little coin envelopes. Um, for this one, I'm thinking what I'll do is I'll use a little bit of washi tape to close it when we, um, you know, uh, put uh, whatever we're going to put in it. You know, we may end up just making like little tickets and putting tickets in it. But I love the idea of trying to make coins. So I'm going to try to do that. I'm going to try to make that work. <laughs> I'm going to have to think about it. So there is one coin envelope. I suppose we could decorate this last one just really quick, right? Let's do that. Let's pick a picture. Let's pick a picture. That one is pretty big. Right, there's this one, and this one kind of matches. Is it the same though? I think it's the same, even. Let's not do the same picture. Let's go for a different picture. 
I like this one. The boiler. The guy is lugging coal into the boiler. I really like that, actually. So we'll do this picture because I like it. Um, I think I'm going to... Where did my pencil go? Here it is. Rolling on top of all my stuff. Just working on, you know, when you start to work on every on your work. <laughs> you start to work on your work. Everything just starts to pile up. And it's okay. I can work on my scissors and my ink and my... <laughs> I'm going to tear this like this because maybe there will be something here of salvage. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Okay, let's, uh, where did my cutter go? Oh my goodness. Oh, it's right here. Oh my gosh. I don't ever put anything in like a specific place. <laughs> I'm never like, okay, I put my cutter in the same place every time or anything like that. So I'm always losing everything. Um, what can you do? <laughs> Which is probably not the best thing for like someone who doesn't have a great memory. <laughs> is to just put things wherever. Like wherever. Wherever there's space, that's where it goes. It's my grandmother on my dad's side, the woman who had adopted him. She had a saying... What? Uh, she used to say all the time. She lived by it. Um, everything in its... Or a plate... Um, everything has a place. Uh, oh, there's a place for everything and everything in its place. That's what she used to say. There's a place for everything and everything in its place. Meaning, put stuff back. <laughs> Don't just leave stuff around. She was, you know, everything had a home and it stayed in its home, right? You didn't. My husband is very much not like that. I can't h get him to uh, put the cups in the same cabinet. <laughs> oh, it's funny. So, but I suppose if that's my worst complaint, <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. I think that's not too bad. Could be worse. <laughs> right? If the worst complaint you have is he leaves his dirty socks on the floor, you know. <laughs> Uh, I suppose I can't complain. Speaking of Matthew, he today is at his parents' house um, doing their floor. He's redoing their kitchen floor. And uh, so, so he recently got the new Xbox, you know, the new one. And so he got, um, he had his old one and gave it to his dad which is really cool and um, he was telling me the story that you know when they were kids the last time his dad owned an Xbox and his dad is like him they love video games super into them um, but the last time his dad had an Xbox was before Matthew was like I mean Matthew was a kid like really young and um, they were broke they had no money and so his dad sold his Xbox and like all his stuff so that they he could buy uh, all the all his kids coats so they could all have coats for the winter and so Matthew had a coat that winter um, because his dad like sold his stuff and he um, he ha hasn't had an Xbox since he just hasn't you know and so I thought that that was so cool that he was able to replace that Xbox that he was able to replace that for his dad and so um, that's cool. He said he's been all happy and talking to him about it, you know, all about the games that he's been able to play and all that. I'm like, that's awesome. I think that's such a cool story. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to tell that story. Yeah, very sweet. It's nice to be able to give back, you know. Um, please don't tell me this is crooked. Why? Why are you? Why? I try to even it by hand. I don't know why I would try to do such a thing. I've never been able to successfully do that before. It's fine. I'm just going to leave it as it is, and it's going to be what it's going to be. That's what I think. That's what I think. I don't want to cut it any shorter. I don't want to cut any more off than I have to, or it'll be... There'll be no image. <laughs> it'll be just a little... It'll be just a little tummy tuck on the cover of the 
on the coin envelope. I guess that might be cool, huh? A tummy tuck coin envelope, a belly band envelope. You make a little coin envelope and you put a little belly band on front and you can put a, like slide a little card in there or something. Let's use, grab another one of these stamps, which I'm starting to feel guilty about using now that I feel like they might be good stamps. <laughs> I mean, what, they cost 20 cents? I mean, I think that's 20, right? A 20 cent stamp. I think in order to ship something these days, you'd have to put, oh, geez, four of them on. <laughs> I don't know. I know a forever stamp, I think, is, actually, you know what, never mind. I don't know. My husband told me the other day, and I can't even remember. I was going to say 70-something cents, but that seems wrong to me. That seems like too much. So I'm just going to not, because <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. So. I heard, it was funny, I was speaking of trains, all the train news. Um, yeah, there was actual train news. I couldn't believe it. I was, it just popped up. It was like, there's a new train. So I guess some fancy luxury train is um, like train uh, route has just opened in Colorado. You know, we're all into trains here. We have Union Station, we're all into our trains, all up through the mountains. And so there is our two train coin envelopes. I love them. We have the guy shoveling coal into the furnace, into the engine. And we have the train choo-chooing along over a bridge, choo-choo. And so um, this one is closed with uh, proper black brad closures, and this one isn't. This one will probably be closed with a washi tape or something um, once we fill it with stuff. So that'll go in with our train stuff. And uh, maybe next time um, what we'll do is I'll figure out, I'll really think about a way to maybe make tokens. That would be really cool. So anyway, I hope you guys have a really good day or the rest of your day. Um, I had fun. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, talk to you later. Bye.